In this video, I will talk about figure design, the design process and fundamentals. And let's start by defining data visualization. It is a visual representation and presentation of data to facilitate understanding. And I took this from Wilke's book. Data visualization map data values onto channels. And an example for channels are position, length, shape of dots, their size, color, line width, line type. And everybody will have their own approach. And this is how I do it. I often start by sketching with a pen and paper. And then I browse directories and galleries of existing libraries for inspiration and look for an example that is close to what I want. And I first try to reproduce the example with the example data and then I try to run it with my own data. And later I refine. And here is an example from the Gapminder dataset where I print the life expectancy as a function of the GDP. And the dots represent different countries. And I start with a rough plot on the top left and then made the dots a bit transparent, and I added axis titles, then switched to a log axis, bottom left, then increased the font size, and arrived at an okay looking plot, where we could add smoothing line to emphasize the trend that countries with a higher gross domestic product tend to have higher uh, life expectation. Three design principles which I took from Andy Kirk's book are, good data visualization is trustworthy, accessible and elegant. And I will show some examples for reliability and usability. And a good principle uh, for elegant plots is to maximize the data to ink ratio within reason. We should obey the principle of so-called proportional ink, which means that the, the length of the bars under the area or the area under the curve should be proportional to the values that are plotted. And here I show two examples with a disproportional data to ink ratio. Note how the bars do not start at zero. Also the plot to the right does not start at zero and the representation is therefore skewed. Avoid also 3D plots like this example. It is very hard to interpret the data. A 3D plot can make sense when plotting something inherently 3D like molecules or a structure of an enzyme or the relief of a terrain. Coordinates, sometimes we need to choose between linear and log coordinates and in this example a log scale on the right hand side is more useful because the data set contains numbers of very different magnitudes. There exists also polar and spherical coordinates and their projections and we will see more about that later. Finally, I would like to talk about one important output channel of a data visualization plot and this is the color. Colors can be used, for instance, to distinguish groups of data. They can be used to represent data values and to highlight. And this is how many of us start when we need colors for a plot. We think, well, let's take black, red, green, blue, orange. But this can be problematic. And one reason for this is that our color vision deficiencies. 4% of the population is affected and cannot distinguish certain sets of colors. And I highly recommend to check your color figure under CVD simulations. Also, you don't need to invent your own color scale, but use color scale that have been designed to be CVD friendly. There are at least three types of color scales. Discrete, they are designed to distinguish. Continuous scales, they are designed to represent data values. And diverging color scales, when we need to visualize deviation relative to a neutral point. Discrete color scales are great for scatter plots. And this is a scale by Okabe and Ito, designed particularly for color vision deficiencies and contains eight colors. What if you need more than eight? In this case, we should probably use direct labeling or use another plot type. Continuous color scales are great for choroplet plots, such as the one on the right hand side. CVD is less of a concern for this type of plots. Finally, here is an example for a diverging color scale used in a heat map. And this is the so-called color brewer pink to yellow green scale, which is again suitable for color vision deficiencies. The take home message is use existing color scales designed for CVD. Don't invent your own.